2024 Volkswagen Atlas is brand new, even though Volkswagen refers to it as a mid-cycle refresh, there's so many new features on it, might as well be a new model. And today, thanks to Bob Bost, Volkswagen in Bradenton, Florida, I'm going to take you on a complete tour of this top-of-the-line version SEL Premium DR line package. And we're going to start right in front of the pop the hood, see the brand new powertrain, walk around and talk about the different features. Of course, check out this brand new technology inside of it. At the end of this video, I'm going to take you for a ride together. If that's something that interests you, don't forget to check out the rest of my channel. Hit that subscribe and like button and don't forget to ring that bell notification bell. Now, let's get back to this. Well, the SEL R-Line definitely looks better than the base trim that I reviewed before. Let's check this out right here. Adaptive lights, LED lights, setup daytime running lights, turn signals, all LEDs. They're connected by this light strip right on top of it. This actually lights up. I don't know if you can see it because it's so bright outside. And then you have a different grill. A lot of open spaces to let the air in, help with cooling out the engine, R badging. Now, by the way, this Volkswagen logo also illuminates and you see the front view camera underneath it. Now, the R package gives you some of the uh, exterior enhancements that including this design of this bottom of the bumper you have the air curtains on the side a little bit more of the piano black trim at the bottom and now let's pop the hood and let's see what powers up this thing and here underneath the hood that's the biggest surprise for many people looking for mid-size SUVs now no more v6 the only engine option available for 2024 is this two liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine producing 269 horsepower 273 foot-pounds of torque but worry nothing it actually has more power than the outgoing engine both the v6 while the horsepower is just about seven horsepower less it does have more torque and it is more gas efficient it still has 5,000 pounds towing capacity and it is about 0.8 seconds faster zero to 60 than the outgoing vr6 so we'll check that out while driving made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission this particular one is a four motion nice hood strut on one side propping this hood nice and tall you have double latch on the hood itself and some sound insulation and right here on the side is where the changes are actually least visible you still have this bold line that goes from the front to the back creating this very muscular look on this Volkswagen Atlas 200.7 inches that's the length of this vehicle we have just over six inches of ground clearance and while there are many different wheel options the R-Line package is equipped with the uh, 21 inch wheel I actually like this design on it you have the Bridgestone tires 265 45 on 21 inch trim you have the matte black cladding around the wheel wells and the r badging on the side now if you look at the mirrors itself you have the turn signal rear view camera or actually side camera underneath here and the surroundings of the windows as well as the roof rails are all in this polished aluminum color and it definitely looks different and at the back first of all what 
comes to mind are the lights, right? So you can see this huge light goes across the entire width of the vehicle. By the way, the Volkswagen logo lights up as well as the tail lights, backup lights, turn signals, everything is LED. This is the SEL for motion on the other side. Atlas is written right in this chrome trim piece. And what's different as well is uh, this gate spoiler right here. It's a little bit longer, creating this longer roof line. You have the third brake light in here and exposed wiper. What hasn't really changed are the fake exhaust and they're really fake. Now, this one has the tow hitch, 5,000 pounds towing capacity, very similar to the competition. And oh, let's pop the gate and let's see what we have on the inside. This brand new Volkswagen key fob looks pretty cool actually. So you have the lock, unlock, and open the gate. You can start the vehicle as well. It looks like we have some goodies in here. So let me get those out and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, let's check out the kind of goodies we have with this vehicle right here. You have the roadside assistance kit. You have the first aid kit as well as you have some of the uh, all season mats underneath here. You have the second floor. You open this up and you have just a little bit of storage right here. And then right underneath here, you have a spare tire. So the, there are tools and the jack to remove it with. And of course, behind the third row seat, you have almost 21 cubic feet of cargo space. About the same, just a little bit shy of what the new Toyota Grand Highlander offers. Of course, you can drop down the seats if you need more cargo. Both seats drop down, creating about 57 cubic feet of cargo space. About 97 if you drop down those middle seats as well. What else we have in this cargo compartment? Illumination, 12 volt power outlet, two USB type C ports for the passenger on the driver's side in the third row seat, as well as the cup holders and a little cubby to put some stuff in there as well. The driver's side passenger or the passenger side passenger gets the cup holders, vents, but no USB charging, no USB ports. Now this is what we have for cargo. Uh, let's see what we have for passengers. Well, let's start with the rear door and the rear door panel. See what we have here, right on top of here, right away. You can see there's a manual sunshade right here. This is really important in my book. You have Harman Kardon stereo. So no more fender like we've seen on the previous years for the premium stereo. You have the simulated wood grain. It actually looks pretty good. And some leather, leatherette wrapping on the door panel itself. Overall looks really nice. You have some cubbies underneath to put more uh, stuff inside of it. And then if you go inside this passenger compartment, look how much room you have. You have tons of room. Plus, the front row seats and the middle row outboard seats, which this is all we have in this captain chair configurations, are Vienna leather. So this is not man-made leather. This is real thing. And you have perforation. Uh, you have some quilted diamond stitching right here you have a little bit more tubing so a lot of variations going on in here i'm glad that volkswagen listened to people and say hey don't make those interiors very plain like you used to in the past and they actually made a really nice and premium choice in here so you have the vents you also have your climate control controls in the back and at the very bottom you can see you have this 115 volt regular style outlet two usb type ports very 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 slight pump right in the middle here and then of course to get in the third row seat this moves out of the way now let's jump inside let's see how much room i have once i get in see move these out of the way now the third row seats are actually man-made leather so this is not a real deal but so the seat is folded down. If I fold it up like this, check this out. I have plenty of room in the third row seat, but this seat is not all the way back. However, I think I would still fit and be fairly comfortable. If I had that seat adjusted like this, which is all the way to the back, as you can see, I won't be able to fit behind it. So quite tight inside of here now i'm six feet tall and uh, this seat is all the way back this seat is somewhere in the middle 
Uh, let me jump in here and see if I'm going to be able to fit in there. And here it is, guys. So I'm not touching. I can stick my hand in between my knees and this rear seat, as well as I have plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room, feel quite comfortable, leaving enough space for that third row passenger. Now uh, that's the back of it. Oh, let's check out where the magic happens. Now let's see what's going on right here in front. Close the door. Boom, nice and solid thud right here. And right here on the front door panel, we still have the simulated wood grain Harman Kardon stereo lock, unlock window, mirror, lock controls, gate opener on the side. Uh, you have the scuff plate, stainless steel on the side, and you can see all the adjustments for the power seats, including the uh, lumbar adjustment and the three memory seat settings. Now, the front seats, check this out. Again, you have perforated in the middle diamond quilted stitching right here really nice tubing on the side this white tubing that adds to the comfort and the design and the look of this vehicle right on the side you have some fabric now if you think about this this is, makes a lot of sense because if it was a leather right here this would start cracking really quickly because of all the weight that's put on here so smart thinking Volkswagen on that right on the side here you have the light control as well as you have the front window defogger rear window defroster a little strange placement of these and then this is the r line so you have this aluminum and rubber pedals right there but what's really interesting for this new atlas right here is all this room that you get underneath this floating console and that's because they changed the style of the transmission shifter and a lot of other things so let's jump inside I'll show you the rest of this interior. Well, since the Atlas was introduced, it's gotten a lot of criticism for the interior and how Spartan, how base it was. So Volkswagen is changing that for 2024, introducing the new technology, the new screens. But before we get to the gadgets, let's check out at the overlook and styling of it. So as you can see, it has several different colors, textures. You have the simulated wood grain piano black, a leather wrapping right here, perforated leather at the bottom. And you have the top of the dashboard, dashboard that is soft plastic. And you also have a head up display, which I'm not sure if you can see that right now, but it says zero and 45 miles per hour. That's on the street behind us. Now the steering wheel, Actually, I like it, even though there's nothing too special about it. It's flatter at the bottom. It has the R-Line Volkswagen logo. The buttons, super important. They're not shiny black, they're not piano black. Here's what controls the cruise control. Here's what controls what's going on in the instrument cluster, heated steering wheel, different view, voice control. And then this is all for the media on both sides, as far as the volume, as far as the tracks. Behind the steering wheel, you have the pedal shifters and right here you have the digital cockpit looks really nice right well let's see what we have here now this is the r view but you can change it to different types of views in here this is more classic more traditional one and this is another one where you have the navigation square in the middle that's square as well so different views several of them now we're back to r and on R, you have the tachometer right on top, that's digital bar right there, R in the middle, speedometer in the middle, and you have the indicator, gear indicator on the left-hand side. Well, let's move to the more traditional look of it, and let's see what we can customize here. So you see both of the dials on the right-hand side is the speedometer inside of it. You can customize and change to one of the options, whatever you like, telephone, audio, speed, time, acceleration, compass, destination, info, etc. Let's put compass in here and that's what shows up. Same thing you can do in the left-hand side, gear display, average economy, fuel tank display. Let's do that. Now let's just leave it at this. In the middle, we can change. Right now we have the blank date, road signs, speedometer, Here's your trip info, navigation, and back to blank. So really nice, customizable display, nice vivid colors, good contrast, no complaints here. And here we have this 12.3 inch screen. 
in the middle. Now that's where I see a lot of people were not very happy with the way that this layout works. And I'll show you how, what, what it does. So first of all, this is your home button. So anytime that you get lost, you hit this illuminated square on the side, it's gonna take you to this button right here. So now you have the built-in navigation system. This is from Volkswagen, but you also have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in here. And then go back here. Here's your vehicle status, oil level, service start stop, etc. Trip data, since start long term, different vehicle settings right here. Exterior lights, interior lights, headlights, mirrors, easy open, brakes, window, central locking, service position, wipers, perfect, right? This is nice and easy. You go back in here, you have your radio and media settings. Right now I can't really play it for you because of the copyright thing that I would get on my channel. So you have the AM, FM, Sirius XM, so different media, Bluetooth, there's your alerts for the media, not sure what that is. As far as the settings, this is for your radio and media settings. Again, go back to the home screen, your telephone, and then you see some more features in here. What about climate control? Now this is where it gets a little tricky right here because you can adjust your temperature here, which I find that okay, right? But I can see why people are kind of concerned with this because it doesn't have the traditional dials or even hard buttons on it. It's just the sliders here. This is more of a touch screen type of deal. But that's where you control it for the driver's side, passenger side, right? You can also open up your menu for the climate control by hitting this button right here. It says climate, climate, right? So you open this up and it opens up on the screen. Now you can adjust the fan settings right here. You can also turn on your heated seats, ventilated seats, adjust the temperature, hitting this plus or minus button or sliding your finger over here. Now this is for your rear climate control. That's a separate settings over there. You know, turn off the rear, go back, different vent settings, AC, air care, smart climate right here. So you have the clear view, cool feet, quick cooling. This is interesting. Cool feet. There you go. Now the air blows on my feet. And interesting. Quick cooling for the whole vehicle. Let's turn this off so you can hear what I'm saying with the fan not blowing really, really high right there. Let's lower it down to here. Now, as far as the air care, see, I'm not sure what happened here. I didn't press that. There's different settings for here, but I wanted to hit the air care button. So you hit the air care and basically see it cleans the air inside of the cabin right here. That's a pretty cool feature here too. Uh, which brings me to another thing. See, when I hit this, it opened up this shortcut buttons. So you can turn off your start stop button, mute the audio, um, hit the home as far as your navigation, and you can turn off your voice guidance for it. You can also adjust the themes to bright or dark, depending on what you like, and notifications if there are any available in here. So this could be tricky because just pulling it down it's going to open that up and some people go like what happened all right so now another button right here is the assist button and that basically shows you off what this vehicle has so right now it has like the radar assisted lane centering lane keep assist right and let's actually hit this up and let's go to the menu so here's what we have adaptive cruise control lane keeping system lane change system dynamic road sign display front assist autonomous emergency braking and emergency assist this is part of this volkswagen iq drive then you have the parking menu so it's going to look it's a park assist it's going to look for the parking spaces if i start driving it's actually going to turn that off we're not going to do that different modes and 
these are the drive modes. That's where you set them up too. So you have the Eco, Comfort, Sport, Custom, Off-Road, and Snow. Now you won't get the off-road mode if you go for the front wheel drive, only the all wheel drive. Four motion gets the off-road mode. We have the hill descent control, hill start assist, all wheels, off-road, steering comfort, engine sound. Let's see if that's going to change anything. Well, I can't change it in here. It just basically tells me what it is. So in sport, yeah, see, again, you have the engine sound as far as sport, so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive, I believe, right? So here's your drive modes. And then, of course, you have the hazard lights. And moving down, you can slide this open. And you have the wireless charging. Now, this is 45-watt charger, so this should be a pretty quick one. Now, you have the USB Type-C ports, the cup holders, and this is the new design of the gear shifter. So you have the engine start-stop. That's where you start the vehicle parking. And, of course, you have the reverse neutral. And then you have drive and sport if you want it to go forward. Now, let's put it on reverse and let's see what the reverse camera looks like. So you have the 360. And right now you can select different views. So I put it to tap on top of this vehicle. Tap in front. This is what I have in front of me. This is what I have behind me. And on the side kind of stitches it together so you can see what's going on on both sides of this vehicle. So actually, this is a very nice setup as far as the rear view camera. Let's put it in park so I don't roll. And then you have the big cup holders, electronic parking brake, a bit more storage right here. And if you want more storage, you have this open right here with the USB Type-C port. Here, scrolling up, to the top, you have this frameless mirror with the home link system at the bottom and the compass that's built inside of here. The slide buttons for your panoramic moonroof, and this big sunshade that opens up and you can keep it on. You can open it up like right now I tilted this roof, but I also can slide it back if I wanted to. Actually, I have no complaints about these buttons being what they are. However, I can see that sometimes when you want to do something fast and something else happened that can get frustrating use your led lighting you tap them and turn on or off you have the sos button as well as the illuminated mirrors right here well this is the interior very impressive of this 2024 atlas sel premium one other thing i forget to mention this is also new this is a split design as far as the vents. So you can have this blowing one way, this blowing the other way. This is especially good as far as, you know, the defogging of the side windows. Now, I know you have this, but sometimes you need that extra power. So you can direct it on the window itself, but still have the heat or the AC blowing at you if you choose to. So this is a nice feature as well. Now let's take it for a spin. Well, before we take it on the road, let's talk about the different trim levels available for 2024 Atlas. SE starts the lineup at 37,725. SE with technology, which by the way, I reviewed recently, starts at 41,665. SEL 48,445. SEL Premium R Line 52455. Of this particular one with the destination is just over $55,000. This is a four motion all wheel drive with the R Line package and a few accessories that I'm going to list in the description of, of this video. What's really important also to mention two things actually. Well, A, that it is pretty much made strictly for the American market. It is manufactured right here in the United States in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the second thing is, of course, the gas mileage. So right now, what we have is 19 in the city, 25 on the expressway combined is 21, which is not bad for this size of a vehicle. Uh, let's see how it drives. 
Now, as far as the drive, the tested speed is at about 6.9 seconds, zero to 60. Of course, I don't have a timer and I really don't care on this type of a vehicle, if, whether it's 6.9, 7.1 or 7.2, as long as it is capable of merging in traffic. And this is all that is important. Now, if you want a performance version of it, you might want to go with like an Audi Q8, or maybe you can go with the uh, Porsche Cayenne. So those are the performance SUVs. Let's see how it merges in traffic. What do we have? We have it in S2. So I have it in the sport mode right now, and I can actually do the pedal shifters if I wanted to, which I'm gonna check out in just a little bit. On the road, just on the regular driving, it feels nice and quiet, huge windshield, you know, big mirrors, no, to, nothing to complain about it. Now, if you wanna to switch to a different mode, right now we're in the sport mode. I can put it in the comfort mode right here. And, uh, mm, maybe off-road no so let's leave it in the comfort mode i'm going to do a bit of acceleration test on this next straightaway here on the road and we'll see of how that performs let's stop right here really quick and let's go there's the power now we got it 40 and 60. You know, for a four-cylinder engine, it's really peppy. It really has some get up and go. Now you're waiting just a little bit for that power, but once it hits, you know, it stays on. Now, the advantage of this engine that it gets that full peak horsepower and torque at a pretty wide range of RPM. So once it hits it, I believe it's at like 1500 or 1800, it stays on quite a lot. So this is, it has this smooth acceleration, really nice. No complaints about it. I don't know how it is on the expressway, quite frankly. I wish that I had this vehicle for a little bit longer, but there's a lot of people are looking, especially for this top of the line trips. So I know they have somebody coming in. I won't be able to do a uh, longer test drive. Maybe in the future we'll revisit it, but so far it actually feels pretty nice. It feels good as far as the drive, as far as the visibility. And, you know, I have to agree with some of the other reviewers that infotainment system still needs some work. Now, it's not bad. I think the infotainment as an infotainment system is a software. It's great. It's just the interface. Just getting to certain features of it could use a little bit of work. But if they do it, it could be a really nice SUV. Price-wise, you know, from 37 to 55 definitely you know for thirty-seven thousand dollars, even if you go with the base se trim which of course it doesn't have a lot of the bells and features that are on this one but it's probably going to be even a lot closer to the se with technology package that i've done but at under forty thousand dollars for a this big of an suv this is a steal even with this top of the line $55,000. And as far as the competitors, let's talk about the segment. So we have the newly introduced Toyota Grand Highlander, newly redesigned Honda Pilot, newly introduced Mazda CX-90. Now we have the Koreans, the Telluride, and the uh, Palisade. And then of course we have the domestic market with the uh, Traverse, the Expedition. So there's a lot of going on in this segment. Has Volkswagen done enough to be competitive? I think so. I think they really did a nice job on this Atlas. Uh, the four-cylinder, well, I guess time will tell so far, you know, just on this very brief test drive, it feels good. Uh, but I don't know, maybe if you own one and if you've had it for a while, uh, let me know what you think about it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned one thing. And if you did, then I've done my job. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you like watching videos like this, make sure you ring that bell notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that are coming up. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.